So we're going to start with a quick question, OK? How many of you have used VR for gaming or entertainment? OK, one, two, three, four, quite good. I'm going to make this question a little bit harder, OK? How many of you have used VR for work? Few. Well, today, you're going to see the, a surgery training case study done in virtual reality. Okay? This uh, uh, program has been created in partnership with uh, uh, UCL. So we're going to split this presentation in two uh, parts. The first part will be Professor Manish from UCL explain you all the program you know, of this, uh, of this, for, for this case study. And then at the end, I'm going to give you a live demo of virtual reality surgery training, OK? With that, I would you like to ask Dr. Manish if he can uh, come on stage and um, go through some of the key challenges. Thank you very much, uh, Frank. Um, do I have a clicker um, that I can move the slides forward? Let's see if it works. Yeah, perfect. OK. It's yours. So. We in the UK call this the operating theatre. We don't call it the OR. We don't use these Americanisms. And why is it called an operating theatre? It's called an operating theatre because, look, there is something going on in the middle, people around the outside. That is why it was called an operating, and still is called, an operating theatre. This is how medicine, and surgery in particular, was taught for a very long period of time, and you've seen these popular um, representations on TV. Fast forward. This is teaching in an operating theatre. Look at all these people crowding around, trying to find a view to see whatever is going on somewhere down there. I mean, people are standing on tables to see that. How is this useful training for anybody? And those that still say that you must come to the operating theater, there's no substitute for it. They're correct. There is no substitute for it. But perhaps there needs to be some sort of alternative augmentation or some sort of way that we can get a better view than that. Procedures are getting more technical. Procedures are getting more difficult for us to understand. And thereby, we do need to spend time in the operating theater. We do need to see what's going on. How can we substitute or augment that practice in real terms? Because these are the challenges. For the trainee, we have this, lack of time, lack of opportunity, lack of hours. It's simply not the case anymore that you can spend the same physical man hours in the operating theater that used to happen in days gone by. Simply not the case. We used to spend thousands of man hours, more than pilots, to become surgeons. But we've now dropped that down to a third of what it was 40 years ago. The institution itself, they're not too bothered about whether you're trained or not. They've got other priorities. They have a backlog of millions of cases that need to be done. They have a lack of resources, no money. And patients want their treatment done by the most experienced person there. They don't want a trainee practicing on them. So these are current modern day demands. And surgery itself is an evolving field. You've been able to walk around and see all kinds of wonderful technologies over the last couple of days. And surgery is becoming more technologically advanced. So the consultant is learning on the job. So all of this is a perfect storm, or an imperfect storm, for the trainee and those that are trying to learn. So what have we done? We have tried to take away from the in-person training, 
not substituting necessarily, but adding to it and making it more meaningful. Because when you do have to go to face-to-face -to -face training, what do you have to do? You have to expend money yourself. You have to perhaps get a visa, get travel documents. There's often limited capacity. There are all kinds of constraints. It's all working against you to get into the operating theater to try and see that one case. So what we've done at University College London is we have developed a degree which is fully VR based. So our students are given a headset. Most of them are international students. And instead of using a Blackboard or a Moodle or something similar, a 2D representation, they are able to access all of the content, didactic, interactive lectures, live video streaming of surgical cases on the headset. The difference that we provide, and we will show you, is that at the moment, and what we've seen in recent past, is that the headset is just a laptop for your eyes on a headset. It is still a 2D representation in most cases. So for me as a surgeon, I want the same view that I get in the robotic console. If I'm getting a 2D representation of that, why do I need to put it on a headset? I can watch it on a laptop. It's far more comfortable. I don't want to wear a headset for two hours watching surgical video. And that's been the problem. What we've managed to do is take the 3D feed out of the Da Vinci and stick it on a headset. So those students that are watching that surgery are getting the same view as me on the console. And that's the game changer. That's the same view that everyone is looking for on the initial slides that we showed with everyone crowding around that case. You want a 3D representation, not a 2D representation. And that's important. Because the actual console, the first Da Vinci Intuitive Surgical Console, was a headset. In the mid-80s, when they developed the console for Intuitive Surgical before it became Intuitive Surgical, it was a headset. But it was a really bad headset. And that's why they built the console. So we're reverse engineering that. We're taking away the second console and putting it into a headset. And this degree is testimony to that. And Frank and the team at ARUVR have provided us with the tools and the platform for us to be able to do that. So our students get a fully immersive 3D representation of what it's like to be in the operating theater. Frank, over to you. Thank you, Manish. Thank you. So we're going to now demonstrate live a surgery training done in virtual reality. So this training can be done in two modalities. We can have live surgery streamed to students wherever they are in the world. So literally we can teleport the students inside the surgery room while they, there is an operation. So you don't need to be in the same room, okay? The same thing can be recorded while we stream it and therefore you can create a library of virtual reality content that then you can use on demand. Today, we couldn't organize a surgery at the right time, you know, in London. So today, we're going to use a pre-recorded surgery to demonstrate some of the capabilities of this training in virtual reality. So what we're going to see, we're going to see two types of surgeries. Now, because this is a public talk, we didn't position the camera near to the patient because maybe some of you don't want to see the details of that surgery, right? So the camera is a little, bit be, uh, a little bit far away from the surgery, but you can see the point that if the camera would be there, it would be next to the doctor, okay? And then we're going to see that this is just not a YouTube in 360 degree. This is far more. It's a full interactive. So the student in New York, while Dr. Manish is operating in London, can interact with the surgery. I will tell you what interaction means. And then students can go into a 3D environment, so not the surgery anymore, 
not in the surgery room, can go into the 3D environment and play with the 3D objects. So it's a full interactive, and we're going to see this um, in a, right now. I need to, to so what I'm going to do, I'm going to broadcast my view into my laptop so you can see what I see, okay? Okay, so you should see what I see, okay? So students, when they switch on this VR handset, when they switch on this VR handset, they don't need to do this setup. I'm doing this setup so you can see what I'm seeing. When you switch on the, 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 the VR handset, they go straight into the training app, which is RUVR app. They go into this training one, and if there is a surgery live, they go into the surgery. If it's a pre-recorded, this it, they goes exactly on this type of experience. So I am now into the surgery room. I can see around, you know, all the people. You can see Dr. Manish here on my left. And as I told you, if this camera would be positioned much closer. I think you need to mirror the screen. I think so we're just seeing this. Oh, they didn't. Oh. I thought you were looking at what I'm looking here. Oh, here we go. I need to exit from a PowerPoint. Right. Can you see it? OK, lovely. So I'm in a surgery room. Um, I can see Dr. Manish here on my, on my back. And uh, I can see the operation going on. As I said, the camera could be next, closer to the surgery uh, um, um, table, excuse me, my, my vocabulary, but I'm not a doctor. And um, I can see what is happening there. I can also interact with the dead doctor. I can also talk because this platform is also has got VoIP. But at the same time, I can train myself. So I'm going to take maybe a poll. So the best and easy tissue, et cetera, et cetera, which one is it? I'm going to do tissue clue, submit it. Ah, here we go. It's wrong. So this is another surgery. And again, you can see a different setup here. But while there is the surgery, I can also open up, I don't know, more information about this. And this is a PDF. So I can scroll this PDF as I like it. I can actually go back. I got a menu here. I can actually go back to the previous surgery if I didn't get some of, of the, the kind of topic. Or I can move forward as I like. So I'm, I'm, I'm in full control of the whole experience, if you wish, you know? So, and of course, you know, I can take others' quizzes. I'm going to do this false. In this instance, oh, God, I got 10 points. So that is great. Um, the other type of experience, it's actually that I can go into a 3D environment. So let me go into the 3D environment. Now I am into a VR world or some of them called the metaverse. So I can move here, and I can get closer to the objects, right? OK, I'm going to actually move over here and maybe play a video. Now, you cannot hear the audio. It's, it's a, some explanation about some kind of a, a topic. But actually, I can play uh, and interact with the objects. I can even walk, by the way, yeah? You can see I can walk like that. Or I can jump wherever I like yeah, with my controller. And then I can say, OK, what's that? So basically, I can grab this and kind of interact with the object. So doing some sort of training. I'm gonna, maybe I like that one much more. You know? So there is some degree of 3D interactivity. But how about I'm going to get into and explore this organ? right? So I can see this is a 3D object. And I can move around as I like. And now I'm going to show you something that it's not possible in a real reality. You know what? I'm going to go inside the organ now. Look, I'm going to tell you inside what is in there, right? Don't tell me what I am right now. I don't like any jokes. Um, so, um, and then you know what? I'm going to go and explore it. So I'm going to fly. Recently, you know, I'm going inside, you know, going all to this environment here. Or if I want, I can move out, right? As you can see, I can also fly. 
So I can see the object in many, oops, in many um, um, degrees, if you wish, or I can fly down again. So this is the kind of experience that students get with, where are you? Oh, I see, I was into the VR environment. I thought you were over there. And this is a kind of experience that the students now get in an easy way. You don't need to spend a lot of uh, budget for this. Every student gets a VR handset, like this one, which is around $500, $600. And they can be teleported inside the environment, inside this uh, amazing experience that is not, it would be possible if you wouldn't use virtual reality. Thank you so much for your time.